Here we can see a useful model of an object. We can see there's an inner circle and an outer circle. The inner circle I'm showing here in a grey colour and the outer circle you can see I'm showing it in a darker grey colour. Now in the centre we would typically have some variables which I'm going to represent here by these rectangular areas where each one of those is an example of a variable. Now we've seen in previous videos that it's the case that we should always declare any variables that appear in the center of an object as private in the class definition. And remember the class definition, the class declaration is the template from which we produce the object. Now in the dark gray area, the model suggests we have methods. Now here we can see a model of a method. Now a method is really a small program in its own right and methods in an object orientated language actually perform the behaviors. Now if it's a program in its own right then it's going to have its own local variables which I'm showing here by those rectangles and it will obviously have program code which uh, again I'm showing and modeling with those squiggly lines that you can see and of course we would have more than one method typically in an object and we can see I've put another method here. Now the first method I referenced I'm going to say is called method 1. The one below it is an example of method 2. Now what we need to be quite clear of here is that each method has their own local variables. So for example method 1 well its local variables are here. Now this means that this code in this region has access to these variables. If I have a look at the local variables here, they're the local variables for method 2. And it's this code that has access to these variables. In the center, we can see we have other variables which we refer to as class level variables. And we need to ask ourselves which variables can be seen by which bits of code. This program code here in method 1 has access to these local variables here. This code also has access to the variables that were declared at the class level, which are these variables here. It does not have access to these variables because these are variables in method 2 and they are local to method 2. If we now turn our attention to method 2 code, this code has access to these two variables as well as these three in the middle but it does not have access to the local variables here that are in method 1. Now this is an important aspect of objects. Now we call these variables here local variables. These we call them class level variables. Even though this is an object, we still call these class level variables because the position where we declare the variables in the class is why we call them class level variables. Of course, we have to realize that this object is an instant of that class. Here we can see a model of an object that has two methods, method 1 and method 2, and at its center it has three variables w, x and y, and if we look at method 1 we can see it has two local variables a and b, and method 2 also has two variables called c and d. Now it's important that we're able to relate this to Visual Basic Code. Now here I've taken a snippet of a class. Now this is simply called class 1 and the object we see before us is an instance of class 1. And this is done in abstract, it's not done with any particular program statements because if you look carefully at the snippet I've just said program code would go here. So for example this program code in method 1 would relate to the program code in this area of the model where I've shown these squiggly lines. If I was to have a look at the program code associated with method 2, that in the model would be these squiggly lines here. I think what's important, however, is to have a look where w, x and y are in the center of our model, and we can see that they have been declared here as class level variables, so called because they come immediately after the class header, which is this line here. And for ease, I've simply decided they're all going to be integers. And you can see I've said private w is integer, private x is integer, and private y as integer. If we now have a look at sup method 1, which is this here, you can see that I've declared two variables, again both integers, a and b, and they equate to these two rectangles in our model. 
If I now have a look at method 2 and have a look at C and D, you can see that they relate to the variables inside method 2, which are these two lines here, where I've said dim C as integer and dim D as integer. So we can see the relationship between a class and the object of the class. This snippet of code is the code for a class, a class of form 1. And within this particular class, I have got two methods, method 1 and method 2. Now, I'm not going to discuss anything to do with the code that's inside these methods. In fact, I've just put a comment there. What I'm more interested in is this line here, where I've said private my object as new class 1. Now this line actually creates an instance of a class called class1 and that instance will then be an object called my object. When this program executes what we will get we will get an object as you can see here. Now if I look at that object we can see it has a center and it has methods around the outside. Let's just look at the methods to start with. Method1 in the code here well that's supposed to be this area here method 2 in the code is this area here in our model now what's important here is this particular line here where it says private my object as new class 1 and that's this variable in the center so now we can see why this variable within an object is called a class level variable because we declare the variable in the class here at what's described as the class level when the object actually appears, as shown here, this line of code executes. And we can see that this line of code is creating an instance of class 1. And that instance is actually shown here. Now the relationship we have now between the instance of class 1, which is this, and the instance of form 1, is the fact that the object reference in the center of the object is able to see this object here. Now, bear in mind this is just a model. We don't want to get too hung up on what's going here. It's far better to actually represent this particular code with a collaboration diagram. So when we run the program again and think of it from the viewpoint of a collaboration diagram, the first thing that would appear would be an unnamed instance of Form 1 because I'm making the assumption that this is the first object to come into existence. Now when this line of code here executes, what's going to happen, we're going to create an instance of Class 1 and that instance is going to be called My Object. And we show that here in the collaboration diagram because you can see this is My Object and that's where it appears in the code. This is class 1 because we're creating an instance of class 1 as we can see here in the code. Now because this particular line here appeared at the class level, we say that the line of visibility, which is this line here, between form 1 and my object, the instance of class 1, we call this attribute visibility. But in terms of collaboration diagrams we give it the name association so we would have the word association here now what that tells me as a designer is that form 1 is able to see the instance of class 1 my object because of the position of the declaration of the variable my object which was declared here and we give it the term attribute because if you remember we often call the center of an object attribute but on a collaboration diagram we use the word association as you can see here. Now reflect back on the previous video which showed in this area the word local. So now you've seen two kinds of lines of visibility adorned with what are called stereotypes. This is association and in the previous video it was called local because the variable was declared within a subroutine.